Hi everybody, in this tips video I'm going to show you how I tackle this bee that's sitting on this poppy. There's a lot of detail to get in here, and as always I'm working from a photograph that I've taken myself. So I start off looking at the lightest areas of the composition, in this case the bee, and it was a case of wanting to get in the lightest colours that are apparent in the back of the bee. So I had some yellow ochre, and here I have some burnt sienna, and I'm working with a sort of milky consistency wash I'm using a one brush and if you just look at the way I'm applying this I'm paying careful attention to the kind of marks that I'm seeing in the photograph of the bee I'm working from so I'm trying to recreate those marks by by applying in a sort of stippling technique which means that I get these marks which are like little lines little hard edge lines what I wouldn't want is a sort of smooth finish to this trying to get that texture so that our bee feels nice and hairy. So here I'm tackling the wing and I'm using really watery paint. It's a com it's a beigey colour and it's a combination of yellow ochre with a little bit of Payne's grey. So really watery. Now going to the darkest colour on the bee. So I need to start building this up so that I can really start to judge the contrast levels throughout the, the bee. So this is a combination of Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna and it's a little bit thicker than the mixture I've been using before so it's a creamy kind of a wash. This is the same colours but this has got more Payne's Grey in it so it gives it a more of a black colour. And again it's that same technique trying to create the hairs. It's using a small brush, I'm down to a treble zero here. And I'm just applying layer after layer of this kind of creamy to milky sort of a wash using the, the tiny brush to create the little hair marks. And as always with this type of work, I am paying careful attention to the subtle variations in tone, that's how light or dark it is, or in hue, the actual colour. Um, like we have the little highlight on the bee's back, which is some of his hairs are being more reflective, and I want to be really sensitive to make sure that I retain that, because if I went over that, it would really distort the the shape of the bee. It's always the, the tonal variation that you achieve in your piece that adds the three-dimensionality to it. So many, many layers of paint later, you achieve a really realistic, cute looking little bee. If you've enjoyed this tip video, then please check out Watercolours with WOW. It's an online workshop with me, Anna Mason. Membership is free and gives you all my free video tips in one place, the lowdown on the materials I recommend you use, forums to get help and support from other workshoppers, and affordable step-by-step -step video tutorials available on demand from as little as £20 or $30. So come and say hello to me there. Thanks for watching.